Hello everyone, Neil Tappin here from Golf Monthly. Uh, in this video, we are going to take a look at some of our favorite uh, pieces of equipment from 2018. I'm joined by Joel Tadman, uh, who is the equipment editor at Golf Monthly. And Joel, you've tested uh, everything there is on the I have I've hit a lot, Joel's hit everything, right? Pretty much, yeah, I'd like to think so, yeah. Okay, well, so let's get straight into it. Okay. Tell us, we're both gonna pick th our three favorite clubs of the year. So Joel, yeah. uh, what was your third favorite club from the year? Oh, we're putting them in order. Okay, yeah, we're them in order, right, yeah. okay. Um, so I'd say my third favorite club of the year would probably be the Ping i500 iron. Now, when we talked about producing this video, I was kind of thinking of products that really move the needle in their categories or made me really kind of stand back and say, wow, that's amazing. And this club, in terms of looks, is a club that does that. You know, you look at it, the first time you see it, you think, wow, that is a sexy looking golf club. You know, if it, you can say such a thing. Yeah, I mean, it's beautiful, you know. And it's, it's a club that might look like a muscle back, um, but it's not really designed for the better player necessarily. It's designed for people who still want a very great looking golf club, but ideally want distance and forgiveness. And I like the combination that this club has in that it looks like a muscle back but it's very forgiving very long and uh, for a lot of kind of low uh, teen handicaps is the, an ideal club for them to try if you're if you've got a few quid in the bank because it's not cheap uh, quick question though it's a hollow headed iron and that's a sort of new category that we're getting more and more in equipment it means the, the manufacturers can make something that looks slim but offers plenty of forgiveness how does it compare in terms of feel to what other play, what, what players might be going for in that category? So other irons in that category aimed at the sort of better player, I guess, mid handicap better player. Yeah. How does it feel? It feels um, a lot livelier off the face, if I can say that. I wouldn't say it feels soft, but it doesn't feel hard. It's kind of in between. Um, but yeah, it just feels jumpy, quick off the face. But that said, it is still relatively consistent and controlled distance is what I say, which is why one of the reasons why I picked this club is that the distances were surprisingly consistent and what you might expect from a ping iron, you know, it's quite forgiving given it's relatively compact size. You know, it's not large down behind the ball by any means. It's, it's slim, it's, there's no offset there at all, um, which is, you know, one of the reasons why I picked it. Right, well, my third favourite golf club of the year is the Titleist SM7 range of wedges. Uh, I think it was 2018. I'm pretty sure it was kind of January 2018. <laughs> yeah, we'll so give you that one. Yeah. It squeaks in. Um, and the reason this is third and not first is because it was a evolutionary product over, two th uh, over the SM6. So it wasn't a huge change from Titleist, but I just, w with these wedges, they've made the biggest difference to my game of any equipment that I've used over the last five years, I'd say. So I put these in the bag, the SM6 version and then SM7 straight in, and uh, immediately the weakest part of my game became, I'd say, 20% stronger which is about as resounding a uh, sort of amount of praise as I can offer, I think. Um, so I have a 58, a 54, a 50, and a 46 in the SM7. It's obviously a lot of wedges, and if you were gonna go and do that, it, was gonna, it would cost you a lot of money because they're not cheap. But if you're serious about getting better, then I think a wedge fitting is the way to go. And if you're gonna go with a wedge fitting, then Titleist do offer a hell of a lot of options, both in terms of the loss, and the grind options, and the grind options for me were the big difference actually. Testing out different grinds on different uh, sort of ground conditions really gives you a feel for what works best with your technique. And for me, I have this 58 degree with a V uh, grind, and it's also the raw finish, both of which are available, although albeit through uh, Wedgeworks, so slightly specialist, but they are. special holes in here as well. It's and I've got some top, special holes in there, and it's got Golf Monthly written on the back. But apart from that, <laughs> it's very much standard. Uh, so yeah, Titleist SM7, range of wedges for me absolutely fantastic yeah i would back that up and say i've also done done the fitting you might have seen my video on it and uh i changed grinds from what i had an sm6 to sm7 made a big difference to my short game as well so yeah good choice okay uh second for you right so second choice for me uh i wanted to pick the p790 irons but they were actually launched last year so i couldn't pick those so instead i've gone for the tailor-made gapper range of utility irons now similar to the p790 in that they're hollow and they're filled with speed foam so similar in concept but what i like about these clubs is that they provide a unique alternative in that kind of top end of the bag between your fairwood and your longest iron a lot of golfers struggle with hybrids when they find utility irons quite difficult to hit these are an ideal replacement for in that area of the bag. So obviously I've got the low and the mid here. I actually started with the mid in the bag and then I switched to the low because what I found with the low is not only 
Does it provide a penetrating flight when you want it to, but you can hit it into greens as well. From all the utility irons I tested, the gap below is the fastest and was the longest. And the beauty of these clubs is they're adjustable uh, by loft. So not many utility irons out there can you adjust the loft. And the benefit of that is it makes it more versatile. So different courses, you can set them up differently to suit different conditions, as well as different courses, certain holes that you're gonna be facing and you can't do that with other clubs, so that's why I've picked them. Uh, black finish, quite striking, different looking to anything else in that kind of sector of the market. When Definitely. Joel mentioned the video that he did comparing the, the clubs in this part of the market. This one does stand out. I'd say this one and the Ping G400 crossover stand out for the way they look. Definitely, what did you yeah. think about the black finish on that and the way it looks behind the ball? The looks are brilliant. You've got that white bottom groove there helping alignment, and if you find the low too intimidating, like I said, you can switch up to the mid, which is still iron-like in the way it looks it's just a bit larger and a bit more confidence inspiring so some really good options depending on what you look for and the ball flights that you're after and they come in loads of different lofts they're adjustable so you can really set them up to suit your game uh, and quite a nice piece of innovation from TaylorMade as well both yeah. of the choices you've gone for show a bit of uh, sort of sideways thinking from the brands doesn't it sort of exactly. lateral thinking a bit of kind of ingenuity to get something different built into their products and I think TaylorMade did a good job of that I would agree. So, Tappers, tell me what your second favourite club of 2018 is. Yes, well, my second favourite is the Mizuno JPX 919 Forged Iron. So, this came out at the start of September, I think, and uh, there are three irons in the range. There's the Tour version, which is very slim, uh, been used out on Tour by the likes of uh, Eddie Pepperell. Then there's the Forged, which is slightly thicker. And then you have the hot metal version, which is the most forgiving, the longest of the three. And I plumped for, I went for a fitting, I plumped for the forged version, which I was quite surprised about because I'm a, I've always been a very traditional uh, looking iron player. So I always had uh, probably a very shallow cavity. And this is definitely thicker in the top line than anything else I've used. And when I went through the fitting, uh, I definitely hit this iron the best, but there was a part of me, you know, you, I'm sure there's lots of people watching this who they've been for a fitting and there's a part of you nagging away in the back of your head saying, I'm not sure this is quite the right club for me. Anyway, since then, I've had the chance of hit them quite a few times on the range. I've played twice with them and I'm absolutely loving these irons. They get through the turf really well, which is always the worry for me with a slightly bigger head, that it's gonna get sort of stuck in the turf, it's not gonna strike as well, it's not gonna feel as good. It's not the case with this. This goes a little bit further, which is obviously is good, but that's not the reason that I picked it. It's because it, the, the, just the strike was so consistent. I was more consistent with this than I was with the, uh, with the tour version, which would have been the one I think I would naturally have gone for. And let's be honest, it looks absolutely fan fantastic. How, how difficult was it to put your ego to one side and go for that over the tour model that you would normally play? Yeah, surprisingly, I was all right on that front. Yeah. I thought I would be v much... Did a little bit of, of you die inside? Or... Uh, well, a, a bit of me died inside when I, I was hitting the ball so poorly at the start of the fitting with my own irons right. that part of the, the bit of me that died, died early on. Therefore, I was able to plug the gap with this. And uh, I have to say, I think these are a fantastic set of irons and anyone who is thinking about do you add more forgiveness to your game? Is it a compromise you're wor worth making? On, on the evidence that I've had, I'd say yes it is, and this JPX 919 forged iron is absolutely superb. Okay, so Joel, uh, your club of the year, your uh, si single best yeah. piece of equipment of the year. There's a lot of pressure. I noticed we both picked drivers for our favorite club <laughs> of the year, giving it away a little bit. But yeah, so my favorite club of the year is the Callaway Rogue Sub-Zero driver. Um, as you mentioned at the start of the video, I've tested all the drivers out there, uh, Ping, Titleist, TaylorMade, um, and for me, this is the one that just ticks every box I would look for from a driver. The thing that really stands out for this driver, for me, is the feel of it. It just feels the most solid, um, the, just the sweetest out of the middle, you know, it just felt the most powerful, and it looks the best as well. You think of Titleist, which was a little bit nondescript for me, obviously gave really good ball speed. The ping I liked, but I didn't really like the look of it as much as this one. So this one for me just ticked all the boxes and obviously it's got the adjustable weights on there as well, which I can add a bit more forgiveness if I want to, or remove some forgiveness and get a bit more distance through lower spin. So yeah, for me, this is my favorite club of the year. But no sort of shot shape adjustability. So you get that with the M3 and you get it with Titleist with the TS3, Not looking but you don't have shots. that. So. Uh, <laughs> Really, I'm trying to hit straight drives with it, you know, uh, it's forgiving, it's surprisingly forgiving for what is a low spin driver with that heavier weight back in the head. 
not looking to shake the ball. I understand if you've got more of a miss hit in the heel or toe, or you want to shake the ball a bit more in a certain way, perhaps the M3 or the TS3 is better for you. But for me, I'm not looking to do that, which is why I prefer this one. And I also absolutely love the look of that driver. It looks, it, it does look super premium. Yeah. Um, and is an interesting contrast to my uh, golf club of the year, which is the Ping G400 Max driver. Um, because I don't absolutely love either the looks or the feel of this golf club. So I feel like there's a little bit maybe too much going on on the, on the crown for me, and it doesn't feel quite as solid as you get with the M3 or the TS3 or the Rogue Sub-Zero that Joel's got. But where this one uh, just stands out from the crowd is in the performance stakes, which ultimately is the only thing that really matters. Uh, I tested this twice. I tested it in uh, the US at the start of the year when they first launched it, before it was actually launched the market. And again, I tested it about a month or so ago, and it is just so easy to hit. Shot after shot after shot. This one, for me, was both long and straight. It was the, virtually the longest driver I think I hit all year, but it was also one of the most consistent. Um, now, part of me wonders whether the, all, everything that's going on on the crown helps the bigger club head because you'd think the bigger club head wouldn't move through the air quite so fast. That wasn't the case from my testing. It was uh, equally as fast as the G400, the standard G400, if not faster. I wondered whether that makes more of a difference on the bigger club head. I don't know. But what I would say is that it is more forgiving than some of the other drivers you'll find out there. And for me, that just translated to shot after shot after shot. It just was just flying so high, long, straight, everything that you want from a driver. I was super impressed with this one. Yeah, I think while... There are obviously different heads where you might get a bit of extra performance in LST or the straight flight driver, but I think for most golfers, this is the one that they're going to lean towards. It's bigger, it's more forgiving, but you're not losing any speed as well. So yeah, it really ticks all the boxes. Yeah, I, I was, I don't know if it's wrong, so I was quite surprised with how good this driver was. It came a little bit after the standard G400 launch. It came maybe a few months after the standard G400 launch, and I thought it was maybe aimed at uh, slightly higher handicappers who are striking it all over the face. I, I do, if I'm honest, do struggle to see where the G400, the standard G400, sits in the range because why wouldn't you want the performance that this offers? Having said that, I guess it's a nice headache to have. This is available, and if you are in the market for testing a new driver, I, you know, going to say you've got to go out and hit this one for sure. Right, guys, thank you very much for watching. Please do uh, leave comments below. Tell us what's been your favourite golf club of 2018. Have you been fitted with something that's made a big difference to your game, whether that's a putter or a golf ball or a drive or whatever it is. Leave a comment below, let us know what you think. Um, otherwise, from here, from West Hill for now, it's goodbye.